This is Eric from Packhacker, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Travel Weekender, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. If you find this video helpful, make sure you subscribe so we can continue making content like this to help you travel smarter. Let's dive in. So to kick things off, we have a 1680D Cordura Ballistic Nylon. So we're really used to seeing this material from air. Um, it's very, very durable. It has a lot of weather resistance against the elements, and it just has a very classic look and just kind of what we're expecting from air. There's not much to say. It does a good job, and we've seen it so many times from air. Um, it's just a quality material that looks professional in just about any setting that you take it in, whether you're traveling, you're at the office, or even you're at the gym. But throughout this pack, we have a bunch of different kinds of zipper tracks, but they're all from YKK. There's a bunch of different kinds of tracks because each of these zippers has a different job. And we'll kind of get into each of those as we go through the different pockets. We've got these pretty basic pulls here, just a little bit of you know, material there with a hard plastic um, end on it and it kind of gives you something to grab onto and even if it's you know raining or something like that you could stick your nail down and really get a good grip on it but we have on the strap here some duraflex adjustment hardware and then we also have these duraflex clips here they're really um, quick to get on and off but they stay on once they're on and they spin like that which i really dig so if you know you're in you know in the middle of going somewhere and you need to like adjust the strap, it's pretty easy to do. And when you don't have the strap on this little uh, loop there, it kind of folds down and hides away inside the water bottle pocket. So I'll clip that back on. But speaking of the water bottle pocket, you can see there's actually two of them, one on each side. I've got my 32 ounce Nalgene in here. It fits inside there really well. There's no elastic on there, so it's not gonna really grip onto your bottle, but it's pretty big and I haven't had any bottles fall out of there. We've got a luggage pass through here on this side, which I really dig that it's on this side because this is actually the laptop compartment. So if you have this on your rolling luggage, this is your laptop backs up to the back of the luggage. So it has a little bit of extra protection because I've had my rolling luggage fall over before. Like if I put too much weight on the top of it or if I bump it, if it falls this way or that way, if it falls forward, it's gonna have all of your gear in front of it to protect it. And if it falls backward, it has the rigid uh, luggage. Um, I can't think of what they're called, but the thing that pulls up on your luggage, it has that to protect it. So I really dig that. And I also just dig how simple this pass-through is. So the strap is pretty basic. Um, in its core sense, but it does have this nice slider, which has quite a bit of padding and aeration. You can kind of see when I squeeze it there, it's got pretty dense padding and it adds a lot of comfort and that aeration keeps things surprisingly cool. So I actually commuted to and from work with this for a couple days, not the whole time through my testing period, but this was surprisingly comfortable and right now it's cold, but last week it was actually pretty warm and this didn't get too hot. I mean, it is, you know, a huge bag to be carried on just this strap so it did get a bit warm but not nearly as warm as i thought it was going to be so but this thing can't slide over these buckles so you are a bit limited as to where you can put the slider so this is about as tight as you can get the strap right now with um while still you know because this is in the way so you couldn't get this any tighter these couldn't come any closer because these can't get underneath the buckles there but if you do um make the strap a bit longer you'll have more freedom of where you put that so where it rests on your body while you're wearing it and then we've got these two handles here again very basic but they have this little attachment up here so you can put them together and this has a fair amount of let me get that oh that's already on there so it has a fair amount of padding there so it's pretty comfortable to carry but given how heavy you can make this bag with how big it is it does get a little bit uncomfortable after a while especially if you don't have very strong arms like i don't so the first carry method is obviously the simplest it's just with the two handles here and i'm holding it up so you can see it but you'd have it down at your side like this and it does get a bit tiring for your arm after a while because you can fit so much gear inside of here but your hand doesn't get uh, uncomfortable because it does have that bit of padding so it doesn't really dig in or anything like that but your arm is going to get tired and one other thing to note is that it does have a little handle here that you could hold it by if you wanted to but mostly it's just nice if you have it sitting down you can grab it like that so the second method is with the shoulder strap and you can just kind of wear it like this 
and it's pretty comfortable because of this strap that has the extra padding and aeration. But after a while, when I was wearing it, I did notice that my shoulder was getting a bit tired because as I said, you can fit a ton of gear inside this thing. It's basically, you know, a backpack in duffel form. So what I did try doing occasionally, and I did actually ride my bike with the pack like this, is kind of wear it as more of a crossbody. And it's not the most comfortable, but it really does get the job done, especially if a short trip turns into a long trek. So I just took the strap off real quick so it doesn't get in the way of the camera seeing these pockets I am about to show you. We're gonna start on the back side here. We've got what I've been calling a hidden pocket because it's actually pretty hidden. The only thing that really gives it away is if the zipper pull is uh, kind of popping off the side, but you can kind of stow that like that. And from that angle, you can see it, but if you, you know, get a different angle, it's harder to see. But this is a nice flat pocket to have on. It kind of rests on your side. So if you have it on your shoulder, it'll be on, close to your body. Or if you're even holding it, it'll be on, on your inside, not on your outside. Uh, so I just have my phone inside there right now. But as you saw, I kind of had to dig in there to get to it. So it does go down pretty far. It goes down to here. So you know you, you could foot, fit a tablet in there if you wanted to, but it's a good spot for like a passport, a phone, or things you want to kind of keep close to your person. We'll flip around to the other side now. We've got this classic Air um, YKK AquaGuard running down the middle. And that's a pretty heavy duty zipper, but you've got these little tabs to hold onto to open and close it. And this pocket actually only uh, is on this side of the pack. It's not on this side. So it's a pretty big pocket still. I've just got a packable day pack stuffed in there right now. So it's nice to have a pocket that you can access fairly quickly. Not necessarily for a day pack, but if you wanna put a packable rain jacket or some hat and gloves, if you were to get, uh, like the weather were to change quickly, you could access them quickly. Um, and again, you have this AquaGuard zipper and there is a little garage up there. So you do have a fair amount of uh, protection from the weather should things take a turn for the worst. And just behind that, we have another pocket here. See, I got a little stuck there because this is you know, a big beefy zipper. Um, I didn't really, wasn't really grabbing onto anything. So if you do you know, constantly get stuck like that, it's good to just grab onto something and make it one fluid motion. And as you can see, we do have these little uh, holes on the zippers there, so you can lock them. These are metal, so just put a little lock on there and it kind of deters anyone from getting inside your pack. But I will flap that, or pull that flap down now. You can see there's quite a bit of organization going on inside here. We've got these two back big liner pockets. They're uh, pretty much identical except for what's on top of them. Inside here, I just have a paperback book. And then over here, I've got a Kindle thrown in there. You can see there is a ton of room to spare on that side and you can't even see the Kindle. There's not a ton of padding, so I don't know about, you know, putting more expensive electronics in there, but they do fit. These are very big pockets. We've got this zippered compartment here. So if you want to lock something down, this is a good spot for it because this is, there's quite a bit of space in here. So things would kind of get lost swimming around. So a dongle or something like that. And then we have three over here with different, um, different sizes. They all have elastic on top. And this one is made of mesh. So I've just got my headphones stuffed in here right now because they can kind of push through the mesh. And then my wallet and sunglasses as well kind of slide nicely in there and then they're held in place. We got a key clip right here, and this is from Wujin, this little buckle here. And I like that it's removable because then you can use your keys to open the door or whatever. But I wanna say two or three times when I opened this pocket and I had keys on here, this was off. And I one time it was in this pocket, and I think the other time, or might've been two other times, it was just on the bottom. And I was pretty rough on this bag. I did run my bike with it a few times and other things, but, um, and it also could be how I did it. A lot of times I'm really quick when I'm doing things and I'm just kind of like, oh, I, I think like, oh, it's, it's done. But you know, sometimes you could accidentally do it backwards and it still kind of sticks like, like that. Um, and that's obviously not secure. So if you hit a bump, it would just come off. But I do like that it's um, able to come off, but not a huge fan that it was just off in the backpack. So I'm going to close this and move to the laptop compartment really quickly. We've got a up to a 16 inch laptop can fit inside here. I've got my 15 inch MacBook Pro right now. And I've also got a tablet stowed in here too, because there is that divider. So in theory, you could put two computers in there, or you could just do a laptop and a tablet or a laptop and another flat item. So now we're gonna move into the main compartment, which is just unbelievably large as you are about to see. So again, we have locking zippers here. You can see we've got those two little metal poles, trying to show you the holes there. Um, so you could just put a little lock through there to give you a little bit. I would just say a deterrent. Obviously, if someone wants to get in, they're going to get in. But having that option on uh, this zipper and then also the zipper here is um, 
nice to have. But opening up, you can see there's actually quite a bit of space I'm currently not using. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I'd say I have probably two thirds of this filled up, maybe a little bit less, probably less, not more. Um, but I've got my lunchbox in here right now, just something I take to and from work every day for using this uh, pack for more EDC or gym visits. And then I've got one large packing cube here, definitely a large, not smaller than that. And then another even bigger packing cube on the bottom from Eagle Creek. And then two more Heim Planet packing cubes that I would definitely classify as small or medium. Um, not too tiny, but not big either. And now you can really get an idea of just how massive this uh, main compartment is. It's obviously a rectangle, so it, it's kind of fun to like stack things inside. It almost feels like Legos, especially if you're using you know packing cubes and different pouches and organizers for your tech. You can really get creative with how you stack those in here. If you don't like using um, packing cubes, you don't like using pouches and stuff like that, it will be pretty easy for your stuff to kind of get intermixed and lost inside here because it is such a big space that things are going to move around a little bit and then you know you're your um, cable might be underneath your clothes and stuff like that. Um, so if you're not used to using packing cubes, this might be a little bit much, but if you do like using packing cubes or you're willing to try, this is a great place to do that. We do have one zipper here on the side. I'll open that up real quick so you can see how big it is. Stick my hand in there. You can see it goes down to about right here. So it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. There's probably a couple inches separation between the bottom and the bottom of that pocket. It's a good place for, I like like a passport there or other things you want to keep secure just because it is, you know, a pocket inside of the main compartment. The pockets on like the front side here feel a little bit more accessible if someone was trying to get into your bag. And if there's something you really want to keep safe, like your passport, that is a good place to do it. You could put like your toiletries in there if you have a small toiletry bag, but it isn't a huge pocket. So you're not going to fit a lot of um, 311 bags inside of there. But it is nice to have a place to lock things down in the main compartment because as you can see, this thing is just massive. You can really fit a lot of gear inside here. It really reminds me of the Travel Pack 3, just kind of turned into a duffel, kind of rotated um, on its side and with a little bit different access system. But if you know, you turn the bag this way, it looks a lot like a lot. It looks like many different airbags. But overall, just happy with how much gear you can fit inside this thing. And you can kind of see it kind of compressed down now. We have no gear inside there. It's still a pretty hefty bag. This is by no means lightweight, but these materials are very durable and you can just fit so much gear inside of here and you know that it's safe once it's inside. So there you have it, the Air Travel Weekender. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.